purpose uh, in kind of a tight schedule today, only about 30 minutes to, for uh, each one, so I'm gonna ask the speakers to you know, kind of stay on time with, with that. So we've got four speakers and a uh, career panel uh, that's, uh, that's been organized by the, by the students, and then we'll, we'll be having a uh, lunch afterwards. Um, our first speaker is Professor Jun Ogawa, from uh, Kyoto University in Japan, and he's the head of the Laboratory of Fermentation Physiology and Applied Microbiology. You know, in the US, most of the prestigious universities are private universities, but it's actually reverse in uh, many of the Asian countries, for example. So the public universities like Kyoto U and Tokyo University are the, the most prestigious ones uh, there. And he is a well-renowned, a, a highly renowned uh, professor, and he has won a number of awards just uh, recently. And he's won the Ching Hu uh, Biotechnology Award. He's a fellow of the American Oil Chemistry Society and the Chevrolet Medal uh, by the French Association for the Study of Lipids. And I have one more comment before I introduce him, is, and that is to, as you uh, listen to Professor Ogawa's talk, to look for the Eastern approach to science. Something that I had never really considered, but it's something that I've discussed with him several times. Uh, what is the Eastern approach to science? I mean, the contrast is with the Western approach to science. I think the Eastern approach is more holistic and interconnected in, in contrast to the more analytical and, and separation of phenomena that we typically do in, the, uh, in, in Western science. So if you look at even the name of his laboratory, fermentation physiology, I think of a fermenter as a bunch of isolated bacteria. Right? But he's thinking about it as an organism. An organism has physiology that changes a, a completely different view of what a fermenter, what's going on in a fermenter. So the title of his talk is From Function to Genes, Enzymes, and Communities, Creating Novel Biotechnology Tools. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Ogawa. So, thank you, Chairman, for your kind introduction. And thank you for Professor Nomas Kazaruskas and other organizing members from Minnesota University, and also Dr. Shotaro Yamaguchi and other organizing members from Amano Enzyme Company to invite me here and giving me the great opportunity to talk our current activity uh, related to something enzyme and function of microorganisms. Today, I'd like to talk about this type of from function to genes, enzymes, and communities, creating novel biotechnological tools. So somewhat strange title, but I make effort, finally, you all understand this concept. Of course, biotechnology is a key tool for keeping healthy us. Biotechnology, for example, bioprocess using biocatalyst is important for future society. For example, replacing chemical process by bioprocess using biocatalysis can reduce the energy consumption and also reduce the generation of waste and carbon dioxide. Future sustainable and eco-friendly society requires much more diverse biotechnology tools of course. So how to expand biotechnology tools? This is our aim. 
I think microorganisms are important sources of novel biotechnology tools such as biocatalysts. So as uh, Romas mentioned, I'm a researcher in fermentation physiology and applied microbiology, so mainly focused on this. This is our strategy for the screening of biotechnology tools in microorganisms. So we usually start from collection stage, that is analysis of natural environment, next microbial consortia, and isolated microorganisms and make library, and move to the analysis and development stage of metabolisms, genomes, next enzyme, gene, and finally use these results to develop a process for useful compounds production, etc. Modern omics technology supports these strategies. And together with synthetic biology, we now make possible a little to synthesize artificial microorganisms with hopeful function. What is next? Maybe design and development of microbial functions expressed by microbial consortia. In these, our strategies, we usually start from analysis of function, especially metabolisms. Then, resulted in obtaining novel things, for example, genes, enzymes with novel function, and also functional communities with design members. This is the title, from the function to genes, enzymes, and communities, creating novel biotechnology tools. So I would like to introduce our current uh, activity regarding to screening in microbial metabolisms and the finding of genes and enzymes with novel functions and constructing functional microbial consortia with designed members. Also, I'd like to mention about the utility of omics technology. The first example is amino acid metabolisms and finding of amino acid hydroxylase together with mention on the genomics for diversification of biocatalyst. What is the target function in this case? The function is for hydroxyisoleucine production and target, an, uh, analysis target is L-isoleucine metabolisms in microorganisms. What is for hydroxyisoleucine? For hydroxyisoleucine HRL, is a potential drug candidate for the treatment of diabetic and obesity. It is contained in fenugreek seeds. This is hard for curry, but the amount is too low. So enzymatic processes are promising for HIL synthesis. That needs high stereo and functional group selectivity. We analyzed l isoleucine metabolisms in microorganisms. This used actually long, long days, for example, in this case, seven years. But finally, we found a very unique l isoleucine metabolisms like this. This is a pathway for producing AMKP. This is an antibiotic. But the first reaction is very hopeful to hydroxylate l isoleucine regio and cell specifically. So we analyzed the enzyme catalyzing the first reaction and revealed that this is an Fe2 alpha ketoglutarate dioxidase, novel type one. This enzyme IDO catalyzes stereo and radio selective hydroxylation of L isoleucine and produced 2S3R4S HIL specifically. Very unique enzyme and useful enzyme. We established the practical process for HIL production by modifying the metabolisms of E. coli. Because IDO, this kind of dioxygenase needs alpha ketoglutarate as a co-substrate. And we provide this co-substrate by a modified CCSI group, which likes alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, and coupled with this IDO reaction, which generates 
succinate from alpha keto glutarate coupling with the, our hope reaction. So this system can provide this co-substrate from glucose. And we established a very, very practical process uh, with huge amount with good yield and good selectivity. So the enzyme is very, very useful. So this is a finding of such kind, new kind of dioxygenase, and we now know the gene sequence. So based on gene se this gene sequence, we searched the homologous enzymes in genomic information. So now we have a library of homologous enzymes acting on aliphatic amino acids like this, and applied these enzymes to make a chemical library of related hydroxylated amino acids, chiral hydroxylated amino acids, which start from various amino acids as a substrate. So not only aliphatic amino acids, we also found unique enzymes act on cyclic amino acids like this. This enzyme has a, a bit different uh, sequence, and we also try to establish library of this kind of enzymes. So using these newly found dioxygenase, we now can make many kinds of useful hydroxyamine acids. And this is very, very unique uh, cyclic hydroxylated amino acids. So this chemical library now commercialized to find out some new target. For example, um, chiral blocks for uh, pharmaceutical industry, something like that. So this is an example of finding new enzymes in microbial metabolisms with the support of genomics for diversification of biochemists. So next example is alpha-alpha disubstituted amino acid hydrogenases. I talk with the example using proteomics for the enzyme system identification. In this case, our target function is demethyl uh, alpha methyl d production, which is the chiral intermediate for various kinds of peptide and amino acid-like uh, drugs. The analysis target, of course, the alpha amino isobutyrate metabolisms. This also uh, needs very long way to find this metabolism, but luckily we finally found uh, this unique AIB metabolism in Rhodococcus species. This is a novel metabolic pathway of I AIB, but the first enzyme, our target reaction, the purification of the enzyme is very much difficult. It is not is easy and unsuccessful. The activity was lost after cell disruption. So how to identify the enzyme? Then we asked the proteomic analysis for enzyme identification. Luckily, this is an inducible enzyme. So the addition of AIB to capture medium enhanced the production of enzymes. So we can make comparative proteomic analysis. This is a volcano plot, and we picked up these uh, very it's a unique uh, expression enzyme, and find out this gene cluster. This AIB gene cluster uh, has uh, something hydroxylating or oxygenating um, groups. This is peridoxin, and this is peridoxin deductase. But this monooxygenase part is annotated as amide hydrolase. Is it monooxygenase? Anyway, we expressed these enzymes in Rhodococcus erythropoiesis. Yes, actually, the uh, gene product expressed in this strain surely produced, certainly produced alpha uh, d methylene from uh, amino butyrate and with good selectivity, stereo selectivity. So the gene AIB H2. H1 and H2, the amino hydrolase homologous gene product surely act as monooxygenase with this electron transport system. 
Now we are analyzing this totally new monooxygenase by crystallographic method. And now we know the monooxygenase is a novel type of non-hem diiron monooxygenase. We now analyzing the homologous gene uh, using the genomic information and uh, evaluating the function of these homologous genes. Anyway, omics technology make possible to identify multi-component enzyme systems, which is very difficult to purify. So I would like to introduce you the examples of such approach in gut microbial metabolisms. The first example is glucosinolate metabolism. Glucosinolate cut into isothiocyanate. Isothiocyanate is very bioactive compound showing anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and anti-oxidation activity, etc. The human cannot catalyze this reaction, and only gut microbes can do it. However, what kind of enzyme and what kind of gene involved in this process is not debuted because the purification is very much difficult. Yeah, again, after disruption, we cannot identify the activity. So then, again, apply the proteomic analysis like this. The initial stage of cultivation, the activity is not expressed, but after the glucose consumption, the strain uh, starts to degrade these compounds and the enzyme activity comes out. So comparative activity, uh, comparative proteomic analysis of this, this stage and this stage uh, pick up the candidate gene like this. So again, we express this candidate gene in E. coli. The uh, <coughs> e. coli surely show the activity to the composed glucosinolate, in this case, semigreen, and produced corresponding isothiocyanate. This is the result we obtained. The semigreen transformed to its phosphate compounds by a PTS sugar transporter with this phosphate uh, chain, transforming chain. And the phosphorylated substrate then uh, cleaved into these uh, compounds inside the cell. Anyway, so this is very complex enzyme system. So of course, that cell disruption totally lost this activity and very difficult to find out. But the new technology, for example, comparative proteomics, can possible to identify such complex system. So analysis of homologous gene distribution in gut microbes in relation with human health now ongoing. And we also use this result to produce a supplement for human health now. Next example is very similar. And also is analysis of gut microbial metabolisms, elastic acid metabolisms to urolichin. Urolichin is like this, derived from elagitanis via elagic acid. We identify, this is very unique dehydroxidation reaction under anaerobic condition. We identify the electron transfer system uh, with hydrogen molecule as an electron donor, and also identify the initial enzyme catalyzing this elagic acid to urolitin M5 as lactonase, hydrolytic enzyme. But the successive reactions, the hydroxidation is a very complex system. And enzyme activity, again, lost by cell disruption. Then we again apply the comparative proteomic analysis like this, and luckily find out the target gene cluster and expressed in E. coli and identified this very complex enzyme systems, which catalyze a unique, very unique dehydroxidation reactions like this. So analysis of homologous gene again, gene distribution again uh, uh, carried out in gut microorganisms in relation with human health, and also the results applied for the development of such kind of supplement. So now, with the two, two examples, I uh, introduced that 
That microorganism is a good source for novel biotechnology tools, especially for food purposes. We are now analyzing gut microbial metabolism of food-derived compounds to find new metabolism and enzymes. So I would like to move to the next story about gut microbial fatty acid metabolisms. That is pure for saturation metabolisms. And after this finding, together with metabolomic analysis, for, uh, we established a chemical libraries of metabolites to uh, develop many new uh, health su supporting compounds. This is our result, polyunsaturated fatty acid saturation metabolism found in gut lactic acid bacteria. It is very complicated reaction. Apparently, in the reaction is saturation of this delta 12 double bond. For example, in the case of linoleic acid, the metabolism generated oleic acid, so saturation reaction. But the reaction is very complex. Metabolism is very complex, involving one, two, three, four enzymes, catalyzing one, two, three, four, five, six reactions. The first reaction is hydration at delta nine double bond and generate this hydroxy fatty acid. Then dehydrating into oxo. And the migration of double bond is at the, in the anon type metabolites. And this anon type is saturated like this. And the reverse reactions of dehydrogenation and hydrogenation finally accomplish this saturation reaction. These metabolism involves very unique, newly found metabolites. So such finding of much component enzyme system is useful to design cascade reaction. So using designed cas cascade reactions, we now established the chemical libraries of these unique metabolites, not only from linoleic acid, but also from alpha linolenic, gamma linolenic, and so on. Using the, these chemical libraries as a standard for the analysis, we established the novel lipidomic platform for gut microbial fatty acid metabolites like this, and analyzed the intestinal bacterial lipid metabolites to evaluate their health supporting activity. So together with uh, uh, scientists in nutrition and pharmaceutical and so on, we reported various kinds of bioactivities of gut microbial fatty acid metabolites. For example, intestinal and zinzibal epithelial barrier protection, enhancing gut hormone secretion and anti-diabetic activity, anti-inflammatory and immune control effects, hyperlipidemic effects, antioxidative effects, antibacterial activity, and so on. I'd like to show one example about antibiotic activity of this linoleic acid metabolites. Hydration product is that this is 10 hydroxy delta 12, cis delta 12 octatesenoic acid. We call this compounds as HYA. So gut microbial flora Prevent, uh, prevents host obesity by metabolizing linoleic acid, for example, in, cook, in cooking oil, and produce this metabolite in human gut. And this product enhances the hormone secretion and affect the homeostasis of human being. Then the, uh, act as anti compounds. Not only this effect, these compounds act as an effective dual controller for both for microflora. The change is something interesting. The addition of this HYA enhances the uh, growth of similar microorganisms which can have the same activity. So amplify the uh, amount of uh, these uh, metabolites. Anyway, this is very health-promoting activity. So now we established the industrial production process for this HYA by using lipase because this hydration occur only with free fatty acid. So vegetable oil is cut into free fatty acid by lipase and we use 
this excellent enzyme, lipase A Y amino studies SD. And together with hydration activity of lactic acid bacteria, we finally produced food grade AGYA like this. And they commercialized as a food supplement. So through metabolism analysis, enzyme purification and intermediate identification, that means the metabolite identification, and evaluation of the metabolites bioactivities, we reviewed metabolites responsible for the health promoting effects of gut microbial consortia. So I'd like to move to the story of the consortia. Application of functional microbial consortia is important for industries. Just now I introduced the use of gut microbial flora for medical or healthcare. The next example is how to make functional microorganisms to design the consortia for environmental control, et cetera, using the effect of lithosphere microbial consortia, especially nitrification by lithobacteria. This is nitrification, important for plant growth. Organic nitrogen compounds transformed into inorganic nitrogen compounds like ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. This is carried out by nitrifying bacteria in soil. But soil system is very difficult to analyze. So we transform these microbial consortia in water system. It makes easy to analyze chemical and microbial transition. But this AOB and NOV is very difficult to isolate and cultivate. So we established that not isolation, but enrichment method by controlling the organic nutrients amount and the aeration conditions successfully. So after this enrichment, we can clearly observe the generation of ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, together with the transition of microbial consortia. For example, ammonia generation catalyzed by this specific strain and the nitrite, this strain, and the nitrate, this strain. So, Representative heterotrophic bacteria and autotrophic nitrifying bacteria acting in each ammonia, ammonification and nitrification stage are identified, then reconstructed of seen through microbial consortia for nitrification like this. We selected bacillus strain for, as a heterotrophic and nitrosomonas and nitrobacter for nitrification. This is enriched consortia, but artificial model designed consortia act much efficiently. So this is four times faster than enriched consortia. This is also applied for denitrification. So nitrification coupled with denitrification needs electron uh, donation. And we selected uh, biodegradable polymer as an electron donating compound and screen several biopolymers. So this is a good example, and this is not so good. And comparative uh, metagenomics carried out, and we selected the microbes act as good one. And selected good biopolymer degraders and the combination with good nitrogen bacteria like this. So selected uh, isolated strain, the combination uh, accomplished this good denitrification process. This is again the artificial consortia together with nitrification consortia. So as I mentioned, microbial ecosystem, microbial consortia is useful for human health, crop production and water treatment. And this is also available for synthesis of useful compounds. Now we are uh, trying to coupling the Baker's yeast ATP generating activity together with some enzymes needs ATP for synthesizing something. So now we are going to artificial microbial consortia application for production of useful compounds. So I would like to move to summary. This is a strategy of the development of microbial function. In future, together with modern omic technology and IT technology, could expand the biotechnology tools together with the strategy I described. So the researchers presented here 
research is presented here stems from the screening of novel microbial function, especially metabolisms. The research presented here were expanded by the observation supported by modern omics technologies. So this research will contribute to future sustainable society through application of unique microbial function as biotechnology tools. My professor said like this, this is something like Eastern physiology, uh, philosophy for research. The working of nature are healthy. We should follow the nature and work hard to learn more from nature. This is the research. So I would like, I would like to say thank you to my collaborators and funding supported this research. And also would like to say thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for an incredible talk. So you went quickly through the proteomics optimization of the expression. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the details there, please? So for example, in this case, the target microbes cultivated in the medium with inducer, in this case, the inducer is this substrate itself. And without the inducer, the cell doesn't show the activity. That means under the condition cultivated with substrate, it showed activity, but without substrate, no activity. This clearly shows the difference of protein expression. So we lyse the cell and extract the protein and cut into peptide by polygonal trypsin, etc. Of course, we, we should know the uh, gen genome, genome sequence of this strain. After then, we can uh, understand what kinds of uh, peptide or uh, protein, uh, peptide derived from protein expressed or not. So it needs uh, genome information, of course, and such conditions on and off. And can compare the expression level of some um, genes. But to identify the much uh, interesting enzyme, we know the another information, for example, some fat related to oxidation system. This is the clue for understanding uh, reduction, and this reductase system is nearby, but annotated to different enzyme amide hydrolase. But we try to identify. So this is try and error. And luckily, we can successfully to identify the enzymes. But the important is how to uh, know the expression difference pattern and also genome information. Thank you for your presentation. I wonder if you can comment on how you keep the microbial consortia stable, the ones that you construct, if you can comment a little bit on that. Yes, it's very important. Not so stable, of course, but this is not so stable in the sense of uh, uh, members of microorganisms, but stable as activity. So we, this is very important to keep the activity. We uh, s find out the conditions, environmental conditions. In this case, important is amount of nutrients and oxygen uh, amount. So if we keep this, 
Yeah, of course, slight change of consortia members, but keep the activity. So environmental factor is important. Mm -hmm. 